my buddy Aaron reviews lots of speakers and there was one that stood out in particular because these were the ones that he seemed to dislike the most. And starting off the list for terrible is the PreSonus Aris 3.5 second edition. And I received a pair of these from a viewer and they're bad. I'm not even gonna spend time creating a video for them. That's just how much disinterest I have in them. He measures a ton of speakers on his Clipple. So usually when he gives purchasing advice, I listen. About these speakers, he specifically said, if you're interested in purchasing these speakers, I highly advise you not to do it. Though, of course I bought them and here they are. So all joking aside, I do see from the measurements that they look like pretty bad speakers when it comes to the on-axis frequency response. But as you guys may have noticed, I've been on this kick about directivity and the directivity on these seem pretty good, which means that I might be able to EQ them. Let's see if that's actually true. One thing I'm concerned about when it comes to EQing these is possibly running out of headroom, meaning there might not be enough power or the drivers themselves are just not good enough to be able to take the EQ. We'll have to wait and see if that's the case. So I'm gonna just set these up here at this desk here in the garage. Currently, I have the Cali Audio LP-UNF, which are excellent speakers. They're also small studio monitor speakers, but they measure very well with regards to on-axis and their directivity. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these up and let's just see how they sound out of the box. All right, so these weigh practically nothing. This passive one, seriously, like hilariously light. So what can you expect? I bought these, I believe, for about 97 bucks for the pair. So there's the passive one. That's a tiny little driver. I think this is a four and a half inch driver, if I remember correctly. And so this is the 3.5. As you can tell, they called the Aris 3.5. Now you know why. Okay, here is the one with the amplifier and is not that much heavier. I might regret taking up this challenge. So there it is, ported. So while I have these Cali Audio LP-UNFs connected, I'm gonna do a quick sound demo. I found this track on Epidemic called Hawaii, which is appropriate because I just got back from there. And let's see how it sounds on these first. So I'm wearing these binaural mics from Sonic Presence, right, left. And so you should be able to hear what I'm hearing. I have these calibrated with my own EQ. If you wear headphones that are good headphones, you should be able to get a general idea of how these sound to me. Working every day, I'm stressed out. 24 7, babe. No, no time out. Feeling the sun on my face and why? With you, with you, how I? With you, with you, how I? So I could tell that these speakers in particular are bass limited because they're tiny. They're using four and a half inch woofers. The ones I'm about to try out are using three and a half inch woofers, so I expect even less bass. Let's take a listen. All right, so I have Aaron's favorite speakers hooked up. Let's click that on. Ooh, nice little light there. Turn the volume up because I have my own volume control here on the Motu M2. No hiss that I can hear, so that's good. Make special memories together. Okay, all right, so, you know, looking at the frequency response measurements of these, I thought it was gonna sound even worse, so my expectations were already very low, but I can see why they measure like they measure. What it sounds like to me is just, they wanted it to sound loud to impress somebody who might be impressed with loud sound from a small speaker. Um, maybe there's perceived clarity because of the, the boosted high frequencies, they weren't able to, you know, give it much bass, so they kind of took out some of the mid-range bass and added it to the low end to kind of give you perceived bass. I hear all that, but it's not as bad as I thought. 
I'll just say that I think that these might be salvageable with some EQ. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are not accurate studio monitors, that's for sure. So for reference, here's the original track. Compare how it sounds to each system. Which one sounds more true to the original? They both should sound pretty close if they were perfect because we are listening near field, so we're getting less interaction with the room. Hard working every day. I'm stressed out. 24 7, babe. No, no timeouts. Wish we could fly away. You and I go to our favorite place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Feeling the sun on my face in a white. So what did you guys think? Which one sounded more accurate out of those two? So now here comes the fun part. I'm going to EQ these with my Magic Beans app. I'm gonna go ahead and download this onto this computer and run some pink noise, do some measurements, and we'll take a look at those measurements first before trying to fix these. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna run this off my phone using the U mic. So to be clear, I'm not advocating for somebody to go and buy these speakers and use this app that's over $200 to fix a pair of $100 speakers. It's probably best to get some better speakers to begin with, but this is just out of my own curiosity to see if these are in fact EQable. Okay, so taking a look at these measurements, I don't know that these look exactly like the one that I saw from Aaron's site. And that's possible because a lot of times these guys can fix issues because this is all DSP controlled. They can go and change the firmware on it. And so let's see, I'm just gonna take a quick look on Aaron's site to see how his measurements look. So these are the measurements from Aaron's and this is what I'm getting here. Uh, I am noticing some similarities where there's a dip here below one kilohertz and above 100 hertz, but the top end seems a little bit flatter than what I'm seeing over there, but let's take a closer look in REW. All right, so this is showing the target curve at this listening position, so you can see that it's mostly a flat line because I'm sitting close. There is a slight roll off because I am off access to them, but there should be a slight bass rise, which I don't expect it to reach 10 Hertz here. One of the benefits of this app is that we can export directly to REW. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. One of the other things that we can do is we can also export what we call the speaker response, which is kind of like a spinorama style where it shows some directivity information. So I'll go ahead and do that. Send it over to the old MacBook here. So what we can do from here is we can just drag and drop those text files into REW. Okay, zoom out a little bit. Here's the on-axis response. Here is from the listening position. And then here's the directivity information here. Same thing for the right speaker here. So we're getting consistent measurements. Now the directivity doesn't look as good as I hoped. And that might be because I'm getting some desk bounce. There's a lot of interaction here that is not showing up when I look at Aaron's measurement here based on anechoic measurements. So if you're running Windows, there are several ways to apply global EQ, meaning EQ that is system-wide. You can get the free equalizer APO or something like Peace Equalizer. They both work about the same way. For Mac, it's a little bit different. I don't know that there are any free options that I know of, but I did see this app called EQ Mac. They offer a free version with Graph EQ, but if you want more precision, you probably want to use parametric EQ, in which case they have a subscription and a lifetime cost, which is you pay 40 bucks and you can just have this forever. I'm gonna go ahead and just try this free download for right now, and let's see how that works. Just to verify the measurements I got in Magic Beans, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same type of measurement 
here in REW to see what we get for the right speaker. These are the measurements I just took with REW of the right speaker. You can see that it aligns with the Magic Beans measurement, although with more detail in the REW measurement, and that's done on purpose. So this EQ Mac software has the option in the free version for 10 bands of graphic EQ. Luckily for us, Magic Beans does offer a 10 band graphic EQ export. Here are the settings I'm supposed to use. So I went ahead and entered the values here for the right speaker and it doesn't look overly drastic. I thought it was going to be worse than what I'm looking at here. Now, of course, graphic EQ is not as precise as using parametric, but let's just try this out to get an idea what it does. Let us take another measurement with the EQ from Magic Beans. So already the sound of the pink noise sounded more promising. Let's take a look at the measurements here. This is how the right speaker measured before. And this is with Magic Beans right here. So let me take this off for a second. Now, as you can see, it's still not perfect, but it looks a lot better than it used to. And it doesn't look like the huge change that I would have thought that it needed. So it went from that to that. I am kind of curious to see how much better we can get it using parametric EQ. So that would be expert mode. And it gives me a 10 minute trial. I guess I can try it. Now, the reason we like to use parametric EQ is just because you can be much more precise. You can pick the specific frequency. You can change how wide it affects the frequencies and as well as the typical gain that you can expect. But that's much more precise than a typical graphic EQ. Let's see how that measures in REW. <laughs> So in purple, we have the parametric EQ. In green, we have the graphic. There's not a huge difference. So I would say in this particular case, it might just be worth it to use the free one just because these speakers are so inexpensive. You don't really want to spend much more money to fix them. With some smoothing, you can see the general trend. The parametric one is superior. It is flatter. So you can take a look at that one by itself versus the one with just graphic which kind of retains this kind of bump over here between one to two kilohertz. None of that means anything unless it actually sounds better. Let's take a listen. Hard working every day. I'm stressed out. 24 seven, babe. No, no time out. Feeling the sun on my face and So that actually sounds pretty good to me. I, I think totally acceptable. That's what I expected to happen. And I think the measurements verify that they're still not perfect speakers, but they are inexpensive. If you can spend a little bit of money, what I plan on doing is giving you guys the EQ or the graphic EQ settings that I used and, you know, try it with one of these apps and see if you have these speakers, see if it helps it sound better. If you're planning on buying these and you just need the absolute lowest cost speakers, yeah, maybe you can try it. And if you don't like them, just return them. All right. So I've been listening to some regular music, some music that I know, and it actually sounds pretty good. The thing is, there's still one thing about these speakers that nothing can fix, which is that they have limited output because they're tiny. So the bass output on this, yeah, you can't really bump these super loud. And one thing that I might recommend is if you plan on using these, maybe use the EQ to take down all the frequencies below what it can normally hit. So usually we call that a subsonic filter where you're filtering out things below 20 hertz. In this case, kind of anything below maybe 50 hertz, you don't really want these to try to play that. If I don't turn down the bass, I can still play it reasonably loud because I'm so close to them. I don't have to have them overly loud. But if I want them to be a little bit louder, I have to turn down the bass. In which case, if you add a sub to these, you might have a pretty good experience. So overall, I think that that was a pretty successful experiment. 
I don't know that these are speakers that I would want to keep or even recommend, but overall, I think the point is that speakers with good directivity, even if they're not expensive, even if they don't have a ton of output, can still be EQ'd to sound better. Now, the fact still remains, small speakers can't play very loud, they can't have a ton of deep bass extension and play loud, and that's the case with these. I will leave all of the settings for the Graphic EQ if you wanna try this out on your speakers, specifically the Aris 3.5 second gen. I don't know how well it'll work on the first gen, and also I can't promise that the bass response will be perfect because these are at my desk and my desk is a little bit different where it's in the middle of the room, not the speakers aren't near a back wall. Also, my speakers are lifted off the desk, so that might determine how it sounds for yours. So if you're interested in Magic Beans for your higher end systems or maybe just to play around, go feel free to download that at magicbeansaudio.com. Leave a link down in the description. Here's another tip. If you decide to buy some studio monitors like these, sometimes you have to pay extra to get the Bluetooth capability if you wanna to stream to it. I would say forget that, don't pay 30, 40, 50 bucks. Get this, I just bought this for around 80 something bucks. It's the WIM Mini. And this will allow you to stream directly to these lossless via Cobuzz, Tidal, whatever your streaming service is. And it has analog input and analog output, meaning I can plug these in directly from my computer. So in other words, I can use this as kind of a DSP unit. So right now we've been using DSP on the computer itself, but what if I wanted to use them, you know, in the kitchen, something like that? Well, now I can do that, and all I need to use is this Wim Mini because this actually has 10 bands of parametric EQ built in, as well as 10 bands of graphic EQ. That is amazing for this price. I've always been impressed with these products. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well as well as these air speakers. Again, Aaron says, don't buy them. I kind of say, uh, they need some work. If you want to have fun with them, go for it. But I think that you can spend maybe 50 bucks more and get some significantly better speakers. I'll test out some of their larger models maybe and see how those do. I was actually just about to end the video there, but I realized I have this Cali Audio WS 6.2 subwoofer right down here below the desk. And this thing applies an 80 hertz high pass, meaning that I was just talking about how these are bass limited. If you apply this particular sub, I don't know, there might be others that do it. That means that it's only gonna allow these speakers to play 80 hertz and up. All the bass will be handled by this. And what I realize is this lets this whole system play a lot louder and cleaner without distortion. I'm You'll notice the woofer isn't moving very much because all the bass is handled with the subwoofer instead of trying to play it off these three inch, three and a half inch woofers here. There it is. So offload the bass from these small speakers, apply the right type of EQ to fill in the mid range dip there, lower the treble down a little bit, and uh, maybe even plug the ports. That might help also. That would require a different EQ though. But uh, there you have it. That was kind of a fun experiment. I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. That's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, if you like this type of experimental video, leave a comment in the description. If you wanna see others that are similar, check out those videos up there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See ya.